Today, I'm going to walk you through how I create FPV videos for clientele and commercial work. I'm also gonna share with you the best practices I use to best communicate with clients so that they enjoy the experience and wanna work again and refer you, and also how I get these clients in the first place. To illustrate what I'm talking about, I'm going to use the example of me working with my friend and client, Daiji. The way I actually met Daiji was through another friend that I met through a networking event. They saw the work I was putting out on my Instagram, and when the time came, she thought of me to make a video, and that was the boat video that you may have seen on Instagram or YouTube, or maybe not, you know, maybe it's not actually that big of a deal. Needless to say, that video did relatively well, and not only was Daiji very satisfied with the outcome, but he also really enjoyed the process of working together. So when the time came for him to promote his new service, which is a home omakase service, we wanted to get together and create something great. So the first step in my process when creating a video from scratch with a client is to get on a call and figure out what their goals exactly are. So to understand this first point, imagine going into a hospital and you have a pain. You go into the hospital, the doctor walks in, looks at you once, is like, here, here's a band-aid, walks out. How does that feel? Second scenario, you walk into the hospital, you've got a pain, the doctor sits down, takes a look at you, they ask, how are you feeling? What's hurting most? Tell me the symptoms. By asking those questions, the doctor is most likely going to prescribe you something way better than a band-aid. This is the big difference between mid service providers and great service providers. They out care the competition. So for Daiji's call, this is what I did. We hopped onto the call and the first question I asked him were, what are some of the biggest goals you're trying to reach with this video? This allowed him to express in his own words what the success of the video would look like. I could write those down and figure out how we could best convey those in our next video. Through asking more questions, I later discovered that our previous video was a huge talking point to a lot of his clients. It was kind of like one of the first or last things they saw that blew their mind and separated him from the rest. And that's one of the huge advantages we have with FPV drones. We can create these incredible videos that people still are not really used to seeing the perspective of flying from the sky, to hitting a subject. After figuring out his goals, I then asked what were some of the struggles he was dealing with in his business. And he was able to tell me some of the ongoing pains that he's been dealing with. Through his answer, I figured out how else we can design this shot and this video to solve some of those problems, potentially. Some of his objectives and goals for the video were to capture the city of LA in SoCal, which is where his new service was going to be based. He wanted to do the shot going through the car because he thought it was really cool. So of course, I'm gonna include that if I can. And then he wanted to make people talk. That was were the three points that he said in his own words. Now that I have these points, I can design a shot or a video that will hit these points as best as I can. Once I had all this information, I was able to go back and put together a proposal using Daiji's words. So he understands that we are actually listening and we're trying to solve the problems and the goals that he has. Without a hitch, he agreed to the proposal and I'm sure that listening really significantly increased my chances of this happening. They say a minute spent in planning and pre-production is five to 10 minutes saved in production and post. From my experience so far, this has been very true. So some of the big things you wanna do when planning your FPV shot is A, figuring out the location and getting as good of a grasp as you can on it, and B, figuring out what action points you want to share in the video. Once Daiji and I settled on a location, a big beach house in Malibu, he sent me as many photos as he could. I looked at photos on Zillow, looked online for as many reference points as possible, and we started to plan out a route. I drew up some routes. I imagined shots and movements and actions in my head. And I also asked Daiji what are the most important points he'd like to show in the video. And I think it's these action points that allow us to tell a better story through our FPV video. I planned as much as I could before heading in, but one of the important things, especially on set, something always happens. So have a plan, but always be flexible in where it goes. Adaptability is one of the key things that you need to have, especially if you're working in creative. The intention of the video I decided to craft for Daiji was walking people through an experience of what dining with Daiji would be like from beginning to end with FPV as the tool to capture everything. The rest of the challenge is fun, but nerve wracking, but fun <laughs> because now it's time to execute the shot that you planned out. Whenever I'm creating an FPV shot, I'm trying to push the boundaries of what my skills and my equipment is capable of. And also trying to figure out what can an FPV drone communicate and do that other tools cannot do. So by orchestrating a one take that wouldn't be possible on necessarily a Steadicam or a crane because it's limited by the arm. How can we fly through and close to things in a way that feels 
seamless and still is able to communicate the story, but still is able to break people's minds, having them wonder how they did it. When you are designing these shots for your work and your client, always be asking yourself, what can my drone do that other things cannot? And in order to tell a more intricate story for brands and spaces and clients, often they're gonna want you to be a little bit more precise with the controls. So while you are training to do more FPV work, I would recommend practicing more intricate shots. Whether that means flying indoors and flying through small gaps, slower, not too fast, so that we can capture the action properly. That way our FPV cameras can rival that of other Steadicam shots that are able to track more precisely. After using the time we had until the sun sets and we could no longer shoot, it was time to get some sound design. Sound design is super helpful for FPV because all you hear on the regular track is But being able to sound design, you can solve all of that. It makes a world of difference. Listen to this clip without sound design. And with sound design. Right? Crazy. To do the sound design, all we did was make sure we had a high quality enough mic to capture this audio. I used the shotgun mic on my Sony, but you can use a recorder or even just your iPhone if that's all you have. This can be an easy thing to forget when you're getting the shots, but being able to sound design can really help to illustrate a story, which if you're trying to do more brand work and push the limits of FPV, I highly recommend you start experimenting with too. For this video, I'm not going to go too much into the post-production process here. For my editing software, I like to use Premiere, but DaVinci, Final Cut, anything works, whatever gets the job done. I like to speed ramp the shots so that the timing feels better in the video. And I like to add coloring and sound effects afterwards. If you want more in-depth advice about FPV, becoming a creative professional, or my inner thoughts, then I would highly recommend you sign up for my email newsletter. This is where I usually just kind of go and release things that I can't often talk too deep about in YouTube videos. If you want the inside scoop on that, go ahead and click the link in my description below. And now, without further ado, here is the final product we shot with Daiji. Here's a starter. We got sashimi of the day today, golden ice snapper. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers to a beautiful view. And good food. Being able to shoot great videos clients are happy with is the key to getting greater, cooler work. However, through this video, I hope you've learned it's only about half the battle. You still have to learn how to communicate your value, market your value, and be able to negotiate and get on the same page as your clients. If you want to learn more in depth about how to obtain bigger clients for FPV, go ahead and take a look at this video here. Or if this one looks more interesting to you, it's here for you. Go ahead, choose whichever, it's your life.